Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. Um, I am still, I am like, finally getting over COVID. I might, I still might sound bad. Um, uh, I'm just gonna say I was wrong about COVID, this shit sucks. It's not like the flu at all, man. This shit is not fun. But we're gonna be doing my final Senate and Governor predictions. Um, I will not be doing a final house prediction, I'll just be posting my final predictions on the community tab. Uh, I doubt I can get through an entire video talking about the house, but I'm predicting an R plus 8 national environment. I think before Tuesday we'll probably see R plus 3-ish on like RCP when it comes to the generic ballot, something like that. Um, R plus 8 is what I'm thinking of. Uh, that's mostly due to how like early voting is and how Democrats are acting in these final days before the election. Spending a lot of money in like deep blue air, oh, excuse me, in deep blue areas. So, uh, it's gonna be interesting to see. Yeah, I, I can't wait for Tuesday. It's gonna be fun. It's hopefully I don't get a massive burnout like I did in 2020. That was awful. That was bad. All right, so we're gonna start from the East Coast and make our way to the West and New Hampshire. Um, I do think Don Bullock is gonna end up winning by like the margin. He'll beat out Maggie Hassan by around a point or two. He's running a really good campaign. Don Bulldog is a really good campaigner. He's just pulling up good numbers and pulling, just going from R plus 5 down to R plus 1 in a state where the Republicans are typically underestimated by quite a bit. Um, I, I th Call it a hot take, if you will. I think Don Bulldog is going to beat out Maggie Hassan. However, I don't think he'll be that popular with Senator. Vermont, that will probably go safe to Peter Welch. However, I do think uh, Gerald Malloy will win a second county. Uh, which county that will be, I'm not sure. He'll win more than just Essex County. Uh, Connecticut, Richard Blumenthal is going to be in a competitive race. He's going to be based off against Leor Levi, who's pretty right wing for a state like Connecticut. However, due to the wave in the environment in suburbs, most likely trending the opposite direction than what we saw in 2020, that means to the right. And Connecticut being a very suburban heavy state, I'm pretty sure we're going to see Blumenthal win by around 5 to 7 points. Maryland, Chris Van Hollen should win by a safe margin, should win by anywhere from 25 to 30 points. Uh, this is going to be one of the first hot takes, uh, the first of many hot takes that I'm going to be... Hot takes? That don't sound right. I don't know. Like, my brain ain't fucking working. How, uh, Chuck Schumer, I think he's going to be a competitive race quote-unquote competitive. Uh, not because he's doing anything wrong, it's because of the governor's race, and we'll talk about that later in this video. But I think Schumer's going to end up winning by around 8 points. New York polling is really bad, and it severely underestimates Republicans really badly. Just take a look in past history and how bad they severely underestimate Republicans. Uh, opinion should make things close, uh, but that's really not because of them. It's because of Lee Zeldin. Pennsylvania, I think Mehmet Oz is going to end up winning by around a point or two, uh, similar to Don Bolduck. I could see uh, Dr. Oz winning by a likely margin at the end of the day, but right now polling and early vote really isn't uh, isn't really that much of an indicator saying it's going to be a likely margin. I could see Dr. Oz winning by at most three points at the end of the day, defeating John Fetterman and becoming the first Muslim senator elected to the United States Senate. Florida. Marco Rubio wins by double digits. No questions about it. Democrats are getting fucking crushed in the early vote here in Florida, especially Miami-Dade. Miami-Dade is flipping red come the election. Katie Brent, she wins by safe margin. Uh, I'm expecting a runoff here in Georgia. I'm expecting Herschel Walker to narrowly pull out ahead above Raphael Warnock. However, I don't see Herschel Walker getting above 50%. I can see him getting close, but still not good enough. I think he'll go to a runoff with Raphael Warnock in December. Next up, we have, or, yeah, December. Next up, we have South Carolina. Tim Scott should win by a landslide. Even Democrats don't like the Democrat nominee. I'm not sure why. North Carolina, Ted Budd should defeat Cherry Beasley by around five to seven points. Ted Budd has massive surge right now in polling. Early vote's a good indicator for Ted Budd as well. Uh, Louisiana, John Kennedy should end up winning by at least 60% of the vote. John Boozman, he wins safe. Rand Paul wins safe. Uh, many people are saying he's going to underperform. I think he's going to, or, you know, underperform. 
the national environment because he's unpopular, quote unquote. But he's running against Charles Bucker, the guy is not popular either. I think you'll see a Rand Paul run even at the worst. Uh, Ohio will also be safe. You know, we got a bunch of dumbasses saying this race is lean R to toss up. It's a safe race. J.D. Vance wins double digits. Tim Ryan. Tim Ryan's not a bad candidate, but the environment is just not helping Tim Ryan. Uh, Todd Young, he'll underperform the national environment because Trump's not backing him. And the fact that he's really hated in the state of Indiana. As well as he's running against a very popular uh, mayor of Hammond, Indiana. Part of the heavy white working class in the northwest of the state. Uh, but... You know, Todd Young will still win by a safe margin. Tammy Duckworth, she's pretty popular. She'll have no problems uh, winning by a safe margin in Illinois. A lot of people say I'm crazy. They like they look at the polling and see Johnson winning by two or three in the polling, and they're like, "Yeah, seems legit." But people tend like, are these people brain dead, or do you have amnesia? Because you do know how bad Wisconsin polling is, right? You do realize it. Like, they underestimated Trump by 8 points in 2020 and 6 points in 2016. Maybe more than 6 points in 2016. Like, I'm pretty sure Johnson's winning by at least 10 points. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. And it's like, it's going to be one of those moments where it's like, oh no, chaos is going to fuck up again. And then John, and then I'm going to be like, it's going to be like New Jersey 2021. Where I said it was going to be lean D and it ended up being lean D. I'm pretty confident Johnson's going to win by double digits. Schmidt, safe. He'll underperform because Trudy Bush Valentine is pretty popular among inner circles of independent voters in Missouri. However, Schmidt will still win by at least 15, if not more. Grassley, he'll win by more than 20. Uh, it'll be his closest margin yet, but it'll still be the, you know, quote unquote landslide. Uh, Hawaii, that should be safe, even though Bob McDermott, a Rockefeller Republican, he's a good candidate. God, I probably sound awful to y'all. Uh, Lisa Murkowski will probably end up winning in Alaska. Unless polls are severely overestimating her support, then that could be a thing. However, I think Tisha, I think uh, Murkowski will win by like a likely margin over Tisha Bach in the final rounds of the ranked choice voting. Langford, Mullen, Morin, Thune, Hoven, the best senator, they'll all win by a safe margin. And with that, Republicans already have 50 seats. They just need one more. And, you know, I think it's pretty clear that Republicans are going to take back the Senate. Uh, Michael Bennett, he'll probably win by double digits. The And we'll probably see a major third party candidate here. I don't remember what his name is. The Constitution Party. I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up winning counties just because Donald Trump has attacked Joe Day. And Republicans might not want to vote for Joe Day after that, and they might want to vote third party. Um, maybe, but Joe Day probably isn't going to get enough support to, you know, get in single digits. Bennett probably wins by 10 or 11 points. Uh, Idaho, Mike Crapo, he wins easily. It's Idaho, and that gives Republicans the Senate. Uh, we still have quite a few states left to talk about. Utah, Mike Lee will underperform the national environment, similar to Todd Young. Again, he's running against a really good candidate, Evan McMullen. If it was a blue wave year, we might be talking about, oh, McMullen might win, you know, like how we're talking about, like, oh, such and such might win. But, uh, I'll talk, yeah, let's talk about Arizona. I think we're going to see a very narrow victory for Mark Kelly here in Arizona. It's going to be the shock, I guess you could say, the, uh, how the fuck did this happen moment of the midterms that we get every single year, like in 20. 18 Florida Senate race, the how the fuck did this happen of Rick Scott beating out Ben Nelson? The what how the fuck did this happen moment's gonna be how did Mark Kelly nearly beat out Blake Masters? And it's gonna be kinda sad to see, but then again, like I don't really care for Blake Masters. He's a Bitcoin bro, so the less of those we can get in the Senate, the better. Mark Kelly, you know, not a Bitcoin bro, so that's that's a good thing. Um no, I really do think that, like, you know, Yuma County's going to have a hard shift to the right. But, you know, Maricopa's still going to go trend to the left in this race, not in the governor's race. Carrie Lake is in a good position. Blake Masters just doesn't have the appeal that Carrie Lake does. Uh, this race could flip. I could see Republicans winning here. But as of right now, I have as my final prediction. I can't say that anymore. My final prediction, Mark Kelly just barely scrapes by. Just like 
his core. He's got like several broke bones, but he's like scraping by the, over the finish line, just dragging his lifeless corpse over the finish line. Uh, Nevada, another race I could see end up going likely Republican, similar to Pennsylvania. I have Laxalt winning by two to three points. He's going to win uh, Washoe, Reno, this county. I'm sorry. Like, we know I'm bad at geography, and my brain's not working. I think we're going to see an inverse situation where Joe Lombardo wins Clark County, but we'll talk about that here in a second. I think Laxalt's going to have a better Hispanic appeal than Joe Lombardo, and he's going to end up winning that subset while Lombardo wins the moderate, independent, suburban voters in Clark County whilst losing uh, pace with Hispanics. Well, not in a bad way, but not as good as Laxalt. I'm trying not to cough into the mic. I forgot I could lift my mic up. I'm a genius. But Laxalt, he's going to win. California, Alex Medea should easily win over Mark Muser. Uh, Oregon, Ron Wyden, he's very popular in Oregon. He'll win by at least 15. Washington, this is going to be competitive now. Like, I honestly hope Tiffany Smiley wins. She fucking deserves it. But she's not going to win. I think, imagine if Republicans do get that 54 Senate seats. But that fourth seat is Washington and not Arizona. Fucking imagine the, like, what? <laughs> I want to live in that cursed timeline. That would be hilarious. But I think Tiffany Smiley is going to, or Patty Murray is going to barely win by a point or two. She's super unpopular. Tiffany Smiley's running a great campaign. However, Seattle's just way too fucking big. So, Patty Murray is going to narrowly win another term to the Senate. And next up, the governor's race is... One day I'll have my picture on this website. One day. One day. I don't know. Oh, shit. Maybe if I do good in this prediction, I'll get it. Who knows? Okay, so instead we're going to go West Coast to East Coast. Oregon, like the Republican. Christine Drazen, you know, Oregon polling isn't that good. It's about as good as New Hampshire polling. So, there you go. It's not good. I think Dryson's going to win by five points, mostly due to the vote split and the fact that Kate Brown's administration is not popular. Uh, California, Gavin Newsom should easily beat Brian Dahl. Hawaii governor's race. I think this race could end up being a lot more competitive than what most people are thinking it could be, but we've had literally no polling, so we have nothing to go off. Uh, Alaska, Mike Dunleavy should win in the second round of, you know, of, um, he should win in the second round of ranked choice voting instead of the final round, because all that Repub he's winning most of the Republican vote as it is, and the far right Republican voter voting for Charlie Pierce first, and they'll just put in Mike Dunleavy second, so all that vote will just go to him, and then he'll win the second round with Walker and Gara still on the ballot with him. Lombardo, he'll end up winning by around two to three points. He'll lose Reno County, but he'll win Clark County. That's a bold take on my part. No, I will not elaborate. This is another race I can see going likely Republican, if not safe. You know, 2018-esque vibes. Kerry Lake probably wins by three to four, if not more. Katie Hobbs is running a terrible campaign. Just a super far left, like, authoritarian what can I say that's, like, offensive but hilarious? I don't know. But Carrie Lake should easily just crush Katie Hobbs. Idaho, Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska should all go safe. Colorado, Jared Polis is super popular. He'll win by at least 15. He'll actually outperform Biden's numbers, if you think about it. New Mexico, this is a race I'm begging and pleading and hoping to God goes that flips, but Michelle Lujan Grisham should end up beating Mark Franchetti by around two points. Two to three, however. I'm hoping we could see a sleeper, a surprise flip in New Mexico with Mark Franchetti. He's a great candidate. Hopefully. Next up, we go down to the state of Kansas. I'm expecting uh, a boring establishment Republican, Derek Schmidt, to narrowly beat out Laura Kelly. Laura Kelly's actually polling really good right now. Kansas polling ain't good, 
but she's actually above where she needs to be in order for their, the pulling error that's traditionally there not to matter. However, I do think Derek Schmidt is going to end up barely beating her, and it's mostly because she's pretty popular. She's got like a 54% approval rating. Oklahoma safe. People are freaking out for no reason. So what if Stitt is up by three points only in polling? You know how bad of a polling miss it is in Oklahoma? Like, 15 points. Chill. Texas, Abbott's going to win by double digits. All the Twitter leftists are going to be coping and crying. Literally, I've had people threaten me with, like, bad language. Because I had Texas a safe Republican, and they called me so many names. Too bad I'm not on Twitter anymore. It'd be hilarious to see all the reactions. Arkansas, Tennessee, don't like Bill Will, Billy, but he should end up winning safe. Oklahoma, South Carolina. I've seen people have South Carolina as likely Republican. It's not going to be likely. McMaster should end up winning by double digits. Florida, safe. DeSantis will outperform Marco Rubio, and he will win by at least 15 points. He's, he's got like a 55% approval rating? Maybe 60%? Like, I saw someone put this race as lean Republican as their final prediction, and I thought they were retarded. Georgia, likely. Again, another example of someone putting this race as more competitive than it will be. Kemp will win by at least 5 points and at most 8. Stacey Abrams not running a good campaign at all. She's somehow trying to tie abortion to the economy, which actually hurts her rather than helps her, if you think about it. Ohio, DeWine probably wins by 20 points or more. He's very popular. He's not running against John Cranley. He's running against a far-left former mayor of Dayton. If I am correct, I think it's Dayton or Columbia, one of the two. Uh, next up, Pritzker. This race could be close, but Pritzker should win by 10 points or more. Reynolds, she'll win by at least 20. She, Chuck Grassley will carry her or it could be the other way around, actually. Minnesota, I don't know what the fuck happened here, but Scott Jensen's campaign fell off. Uh, I could see Tim Walls is probably going to run even with Joe Biden's 2020 numbers. Probably wins by six or seven points. For some reason, people think Wisconsin's governor race is going to be super competitive. It's not. Mickles is going to win by around eight to nine points, if not double digits. Tony Evers is super unpopular. The only difference between him and Mandela Barnes is Tony Evers isn't going around talking shit about the Founding Fathers and saying our country's evil. Only diff. Next up, Michigan. I think this is another sleeper flip that could happen. I think Whitmer's going to win by around two or three points. She's become an institution in the state of Michigan and Michigan politics. It's going to be really difficult to beat her, but I think she's going to narrowly beat out Tudor Dixon. Next up, Pennsylvania. Safe Democrat. I don't care. I want to see right-wingers fucking cry. Okay? I want to see it. I despise Doug Mastriano. I don't care if it's biased. Polling in Pennsylvania really ain't that bad. When, it, when we get close to election day and we're like a few days out. And Shapiro is still leading in polling by double digits. Shapiro's going to win by a safe margin. I want to see them, them bitches cry for pushing this lunatic as the nominee instead of God blessed Lou Barletta. We wouldn't be having this problem if you didn't fucking push down Mastriano down our throats. Onward. Okay, another hot take. I think New York's governor going to flip. I, I think so. I think so. Because if Hochul wins by more than five points, I'm going to look really bad. But then again, when do I not look bad? Honestly, when do I not look bad? I just had a rant about Doug Mastriano. I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> the Legend of Zelda, I think, is going to happen. It's getting to the point where the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, is hoping Lee Zeldin wins. That's how bad things are in New York right now. I think Zeldin's going to pull it off. Vermont, New Hampshire, safe Republican. Sununu is actually going to underperform his 2020 numbers because he's starting to isolate the Trump base in New Hampshire, which kind of helped him in, in the in 2020 get to like 30, 40 percent. 
uh, main. I think we're going to see uh, Janet Mills win by five points. This is another race I think could end up flipping. There's really only f there's four races I could see flip that I'm going to have blue. That's going to be New Mexico, Michigan, Maine, and Connecticut. Yep, I think Lamont's going to win by anywhere from three to seven. So I'm going to say five. However, I think Stefanowski could still pull it off. My hopes aren't as high as they used to be at the beginning of the election cycle. But if Stefanowski wins, I'd be so happy. <laughs> like, we all know, like, I am the jerk-off king for Bob Stefanowski. We all know this, but, you know, I'm also a rationalist. To just ignore the fact I have Pennsylvania's governor race as safe blue. Um, speaking of safe blue, Massachusetts, this one could be competitive. However, you're going to be needing a polling error of more than 10 points. However, do expect one of Massachusetts counties, most likely by the tail, because that is where Jeff Deal is super popular. He ended up winning a county against Elizabeth Warren in fucking 2018, and a Senate race, by the way, a federal level race. So, uh, this is another race. I could, I don't see Rhode Island flipping. I can see it being more competitive, but I do think Dan McKee's going to end up winning by around six or seven points, and Westmore should end up beating Dan Cox by 30 points. Again, Dan Cox is awful. So here's my final prediction for the governor's map. 31 Republican governor's seats and 19 Democrat governor's seats. I know I sound awful. I'm probably going to take more break, another long break after this. Probably no live stream Tuesday. I was going to do a live stream on Tuesday where I got did a drinking game with y'all. If y'all were old enough to drink. But I can't because I feel like crap. Hopefully I don't get fired from my jobs. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for much watching. This is the Catech One saying, peace.